course, Game Development Basics, Week 1, Lesson 9, Introduction to Collision and Physics. In this lesson, we'll describe the purpose of collision in game development, demonstrate some implementation of collision between two actors in Unreal Engine, we'll describe basic physics principles as they relate to game development, and we'll demonstrate implementation of physics in Unreal Engine. Collision forms the basis for how actors interact with each other in Unreal Engine. Collision handling can be customized for each object by changing the collision type of an actor. And there are three types of collision, blocking, overlap, and no collision or ignore. And you can set every actor to react to different types of actors, which really allows you a lot of customization and how actors will interact with each other within your world. In addition, collision can be changed at runtime, which means you can change it while the game is running based upon certain circumstances. Let's head back to Unreal Engine and talk about implementing some collision. For this demonstration, I'm back in our default level, and we have our two chairs here, and we can see by going into the collision settings, the settings for this actor. So there are quite a few settings here. We don't need to go into all of them, but the first one that I'll show is collision presets. If we select this dropdown, we have quite a few presets that are already set up for us. Default, custom, no collision, block all, overlap all, and then a lot of other ones. And the default allows us to collide with this actor in a scene. I've set up the other chair here to have no collision, which means when I play my game, I can collide with this chair, but I cannot collide with this chair. I'll pass right through it. So this can be beneficial when you want something to have a custom way that it interacts with other actors in the game, or if you wanted to change something during runtime where something had a collider on it and then maybe because of the way your game is developed, you would turn off that collider and allow the player to pass through it or allow other actors to pass through it. We can also select custom, which allows us to have a lot more control over the collision of this actor. We can set how it interacts with each of these other actor types. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about physics. Unreal Engine has a physics engine or a physics simulator built into it that will simulate real world physical attributes of an object. For instance, gravity, mass, and inertia. And let's do a little demonstration of the way that physics act in a game. Back in our scene here, I've re-enabled the collision on my chair, and I've also enabled simulate physics and turned off gravity. And I've done that for the table, as well as this little statue here. When I press play, you'll notice that they both start to float away. And that's because I've disabled gravity on them. As well as my chair will start to float away off into space. I can enable gravity back on my table and my statue. And notice they're no longer floating, but I can still move them in the scene like real world objects. And this chair does not have physics enabled, so I can't move it. So this is just a little bit about physics and how it works in Unreal Engine. If you're more interested in having actual physics in your game, I highly recommend you read up on this and do some additional research. And here I am back in the level that I created. And you'll notice that our player is actually already using physics. We're using this torque node, which is a node that requires physics to be enabled. And the collision is enabled on these walls by default, which allows us to not be able to pass through them. We want to be able to set up an endpoint for each of the maps that will allow us to be transported to the next map in our game. And for this, I have created this little cylinder. You can drag one into the level, and then a little tip here as well. There's a little button here on the details panel that allows you to convert the actor into a blueprint. And by default, this sets it up as a static mesh actor. This isn't what we want for our blueprint though, but if you wanted to take this as a shortcut for other items, you definitely could. I want to create a new actor 
and we're going to select actor and we're going to label this BP end point. We'll open this up and dock it. And the first thing I want to do is add a new static mesh component and we'll type cylinder. And now we have a cylinder static mesh on our actor. I'll delete this cylinder. And drag my endpoint into the scene. And what we want to do for this is use the collider. And for this actor, we want to enable overlapping. So I'll scroll down here to my collision and I'm going to set it to overlap all. And this means whenever another actor overlaps this or goes inside of the volume of the cylinder, it's going to create an overlap event. And to test this, I'm going to temporarily drag my start point a little bit closer, go back to my endpoint, and we could see that we have this actor begin overlap already on our blueprint. We can drag off of that, do a print test, compile. And now when my player interacts with that, we get an event that calls hello as a print screen. This is actually a time to talk about some behavior that I don't necessarily like about this. And that's when I get too close to the wall, my camera zooms way in. And that's because the way that the spring arm component works on our player is that when it collides with something, it'll still allow us to see our player. And this is useful in games like third person games where you can see the player, but when you get too close to a wall, you don't want to go inside that wall. You want to still be able to see the player. To disable this though, we can just go to our spring arm and unselect do collision test. And now when we press play, we'll no longer go inside the wall. The view will stay the same. So let's get this set up to go to another level. When we overlap this event, we want it to transport us to the next level of the game. So we're going to drag off this pin and we're going to type open level. We're going to select open level by name. And the input here is the level name, which is a name variable. And name variables are a type of string with a little bit more restriction put on it. Now at this time, we only have one level. So this is a good time to make a second level. Then back here from the main page, I'm going to say new level. We'll select basic again and create. And this we're going to save as level two. Again, we want to drag our player start point in and we can put the same grass down onto our level. Let's go back to level one. And here in our endpoint BP, we're going to type level two. This does need to be exact. So make sure you're being aware of typos and misspellings. We're going to compile and when we hit play and we interact with this, we'll be transported to level two. This is set up to only be level two, which means we won't be able to use it for all the future levels. For this, we need an instance editable variable. We're going to drag off this and say promote to variable and it says level name. We can compile and see that it pre-filled in level two, and then we'll select instance editable variable. An instance editable variable allows us to set it for each instance of this actor. So as we can see now, I have my actor in the scene, and over here, I have a new section where I can put in the next level. So in this case, we'll call it level three. Let's save all, and we'll create another new level basic again. And we're going to save this level as level three. And just to signify that this is a unique level, 
we're going to leave the ground a different color. Let's go back to level one and make sure this is set to level two. And now we should be able to go from level one to level two to level three without any issues.